In today's video, we're going to enhance our obstacle generator by adding collectibles like coins, which the player can pick up and later use for upgrades. Let's dive in. Previously, we created shaped obstacles and generated them in the scene instead of just a single cube. We also fixed performance issues by destroying obstacles that are no longer visible behind the player, improving the overall experience. However, as we play the game, we notice there's nothing for the player to collect, just obstacles. So let's add some coins for the player to collect. We'll start by modifying the obstacle generator to spawn collectibles, like coins, for the player. First, we need to declare the coin prefabs we're going to instantiate in the scene. Let's store them in an array so we can easily add different coin types later if needed. Next, we'll declare a coin chance variable to define the probability of generating a coin instead of an obstacle. This way, we can control how often coins spawn. In the update method, we'll use random.value to generate a random number between a point zero and one point zero. If the random value is less than our coin chance, we'll generate a coin. Otherwise, we'll generate a regular obstacle. The coin generation process is similar to obstacle generation, so we can copy the obstacle generation code inside the if statement. We'll simply replace obstacle prefabs with coin prefabs. Since our coin will be smaller than the regular obstacles, we need to make sure it spawns at a height where the player can actually collect it. If we generate it at y equals 1.5, it might be too high for the player to reach. Instead, we'll set the y position to something like 0.6, so the coin is within reach. Now in Unity, go to the Obstacle Manager. You'll see it's waiting for the cube prefab. Let's create some coins for our player. Create an empty game object and reset its transform. Name it coin. Add a cube as a child of the coin game object and scale it down to 0.5 on all axes. Enable the is trigger property so that the player can pass through the coin without colliding and we can use triggers to collect it. So when the player touches the coin, we'll increase the coin count and destroy the coin from the scene. Now, duplicate the coin prefab, adjust the distance between them, I'm placing them two units apart, and arrange four coins in a row. Once you're happy with the arrangement, drag and drop the coin into your prefabs folder to make it reusable. Go back to the obstacle manager and assign the newly created coin prefab. Now, when you play the game, you'll see coins spawn in random places along with the obstacles, adding more interaction for the player. However, right now, the ball just passes through the coins. To make the coin collectible, we need two scripts, one to manage the coin behavior, the individual coin, and another to manage the overall coin count and UI. Let's start with the coin's behavior. Inside the scripts folder, create a new folder called coin and then create a new script called coin. In this script, declare a coin value variable and set its default value to one. You can adjust it for different coins. Remove start and update method and use on trigger. We'll check the tag of the other object using compare tag to see if it's the player. When the player triggers the coin, We'll increase the total coin count using Coin Manager and destroy the coin. Since the coin script is attached to each individual coin in the game, it should only manage the behavior of that specific coin. For handling the overall game state, such as tracking the total coins collected, updating the UI, and saving the player's coin score, we'll use a Coin Manager script. Let's create a new script inside the coin folder and name it Coin Manager. This script will be responsible for keeping track of the total coins the player collects, updating the UI to display the coin count, and saving the coin score between game sessions. Declare a total coins variable to store the total number of coins collected by the player. Create a public method, add coin in amount, that adds the collected coins to total coins and logs the updated value to the console. 
To ensure that Coin Manager is accessible from anywhere in the game, we'll use the Singleton pattern. This allows us to manage the coin count centrally without creating multiple instances. Let's create a static instance variable for the Coin Manager so it can be accessed from any script in the game. To initialize the instance, we will use the awake method, where we simply set the instance to this. However, to ensure that only one instance of Coin Manager exists, since we're implementing the singleton pattern, we need to restrict the creation of multiple instances. We will check if the instance is already set. If it is, we will destroy the new Coin Manager game object to preserve the original instance. Now, in the coin script, we can easily call the addCoin method using the Coin Manager instance. Once the coin is collected, we will also destroy the coin object, making it disappear from the game to simulate the player picking it up. Next, we'll edit our coin prefab. For each coin inside the parent object, we'll attach the coin script to give them the behavior of a coin. This will allow us to set the value of each coin individually. For example, let's set the value of the fourth coin to two. After that, create an empty game object named Coin Manager and attach the Coin Manager script to it. Let's play the game and check if everything works you'll see that the player can now pick up the coin, and in the console, you can also track the total number of coins collected. However, there's one issue. If the player doesn't pick up a coin, it stays in the scene. To fix this, we'll simply attach a destroyer script to the parent of the coin. Now when you play the game, any coin that is left behind by the player will be destroyed as it moves out of the player's view. Fantastic! You've successfully added coins that the player can collect and use for upgrades. If you have any questions or need help, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Unity tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.